Another top tip is when you're doing jobs that require you to have glasses on and use both hands, put them on first. Especially when they involve confined spaces and tiny fiddly screws. Ugh. And if, you, if you're a Bavaria owner, if you're a Bavaria owner, another top tip is if Bavaria put them, use the mild steel screws in the tops of your cabinets, take them out and put stainless in. Trust me. It's a pain in the ass to do it, but it is so much better when you need access on top of the cabinets. Sorry for taking your cabinets apart. It wasn't yours. It must be the one next door. Beverly's uh, needs access to my cupboard. Every now and then, you do have to pull everything out of your cupboards just to clean the cupboards because mould spores um, do propagate in your cupboards. And the best way to keep them down is one, always keep your cupboards open and two, give them a regular cleaning out. Um, you know, and that's really it. And number three, um, if you're in a marina with a tumble dryer, do take your clothes out and give them a tumble uh, when you're taking them out because the um, warm tumble will actually kill the spores. This is a different top tip. But um, to get extra space, you can see I've got my nighties here. Um, what I've done is um, I've cut down a shoe rack and I just sort of like have um, my nighties in that. Well, I've just cleaned the uh, cupboard out with a combination of vinegar and tea tree oil. You really don't need much of the tea tree oil. But my cupboards are now stinking, but never mind. Uh, so they are nicely cleaned out. But um, anyway, another tip tip is to have big bags on your boat. Yes, no, Beverly and I are not the big bags. These are our big bags. Um, because I'm just going to uh, take all these clothes up and um, basically put them in the tumble just to give them a quick tumble. You know, that will get rid of the mould spores. Uh, but like I say, I need the big bag just so that I can carry stuff around. So why are you in that strange position, Bev? Because this is how I reach the bolts. They're at the top of this cabinet and then they're slightly inboard above the cabinet. And if I stay there, I can't bend my arm enough to reach around. I've got to lie here so I can bend my wrist and I can just touch the bolts there and there. And then I have to take my tool, my Franken tool, and I have to pass it totally blind using just my fingertips to find the nut. And then I can get onto the nut and then I can I'm not upstairs you tighten know. it like so and that's how it has to be done so why exactly um did you have to tighten them I think when we did this originally we ran out of nylock nuts and we didn't put um the gluey stuff what do you call it the, the red stuff that we stick on bolts I forget what it's called um so we just used ordinary nuts and we, we just backed them on as hard as we could. They've vibrated at least over five or six years, whatever it's been, and they weren't even finger tight. So I've now replaced them with nice nylock 10 mil nuts and hopefully that's them good again. Yeah. I wouldn't mind having a look at this uh, franken tool you had to produce. <sighs> you can sit up for this. Hey! <laughs> Lovely franken tool. Yeah, and I've got a 10 mil socket down behind one of the cabinets that I've got to get out because uh, when you're doing this sort of thing, occasionally, you know, um, they fall off. So, you know, things like that happen. Yeah. And then you're left. <laughs> right. Uh, one little thing I'm just going to introduce at this point is, as you can see in recent episodes, we've been putting in some top tips, uh, things that we think would help fellow boaters. If you know of any we haven't covered, do get in touch, either Facebook, YouTube comments, our Discord server, whatever mechanism, uh, and let us know. If we can include your top tip, we'll put it in. And I'm going to kick the ball off with these things, hose lock fittings. Now, most boats have these, and they're extremely useful for taking things apart and putting them together. But the big problem with them is that when you take the joint apart, water comes shooting out. You try and put the joint together, water tends to shoot everywhere and you get absolutely soaked. Now we were talking to a fellow boater recently and we surprised the life out of him with 
this. It's a hose lock fitting, but you'll notice it's got colour around the collar, unlike the standard one, which is totally different. And the reason is this one has a shut off. There's actually water pressure in this hose at the minute. So if I take this and just open it up and very carefully point it that way, <laughs> if I put this in, and as you can see, when I take it out, I don't get soaked. Ah! So I wouldn't do that without that. These coloured ones have a little lock that when you pop the thing out, shuts off the water supply. Very useful for allowing you to interchange and swap things around without getting yourself soaked. Getting wet. <laughs> so one of the things that I would recommend um, when you are living on a boat is skin, skinny hangers. Um, purely because you've only got a very, very limited uh, hanging space. So having a skinny hanger um, just means that you can at least have more stuff in your wardrobe. Because you don't have an awful lot of wardrobe to put stuff in. But just thinking about moulds in general um, obviously I've talked about a couple of things to get rid of uh, moulds but the number one thing that you really really do need is a dehumidifier uh, basically if your boat is damp or wet then the moulds are going to thrive so getting rid of that water in your boat is the number one thing to get, keep them down while I remember, another top tip for boat life is um, try and avoid things that need ironing. There's lots and lots of fabrics that don't need ironing anymore. Now, I do love my linen trousers, but I have to be honest, they look a hell of a lot better for a good iron. <laughs> so I don't wear them that much because I don't really get the iron out. And it's just one of those things. Try and avoid clothes that need ironing. Lucky for you, this marina has an iron. It has got an iron, so I do iron my uh, linen trousers, but let's be honest, the vast majority of um, marinas don't have that service. Or either that or I don't look for them, but you know what I mean. really useful thing to have on your boat but I will put a caveat on this um, in that um, it's really useful if you're in like us cold climates <gasps> because um, it's bubble wrap okay yeah well you don't really need bubble wrap when it's warm hot and sunny do you Bev? you don't really need bubble wrap I know but this is what this video is about strange things that you might need on your boat <laughs> speak for yourself buster and spinner's a bit stem warm <laughs> <laughs> and that's not a strange thing when you're on your boat i like to be warm <laughs> last night the um i think we got our first real chill last night didn't we it certainly did um now we were further higher up when we started the evening and uh, that was starting to freeze but luckily down here on the, the marina, it was... Yeah, uh, my mum's is about six or 700 feet up above sea level, so you lose a couple of degrees temperature for that. Yeah. Com coming back down here, the temperature rose to a sunny, balmy five Celsius. Whoa! <laughs> but that was uh, early evening. It certainly chilled a bit more in, as it certainly it got on. cold in the night, didn't it? Yeah. Um, but because it gets cold, um, we have aluminium frames on all our windows. Mm. So any condensation at all just condenses out, doesn't it, Bev? Yeah, the aluminium window goes all the way to the inside of the boat. So when the outside of it gets extremely cold, the inside of it gets extremely cold. And then, as you say, any moisture in the boat just condenses in the windows and then usually drips on your head or your bedding. So it's not fun. No. So put the layer of this over it is enough to stop it getting really, really chilled. Yeah, what we have on um, the top of the boat is we have fabric covers, 
And then underneath that, I've got um, a, a layer of camping mat. I've got a camping mat, so I've got insulation on those. But this is what we need for the side uh, windows. Yeah, because the down thing about downside about putting um, the fabric and the camping mat on, on the hatch covers on the roof, it's just pitch black inside. <laughs> There's no light at all. I'd like to have some light coming into the boat. So though it's dull, dark and gloomy for the next few months, I would like some of the gloom to be able to get in rather than nothing at all. Yeah, and if it is a nice day, we do actually take the hatch covers off. Yeah. But uh, normally it's just dark, dark and more dark. <laughs> right, so anyway, I have got the aluminium poles that we keep for this. Uh, what we do with these is we tip these together and then we hang this from it. So we're going to get on with that now, aren't we? Well, it's not going to get done by itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah it would be useful. Right, well, I need it here, and then it was somewhere over there that we needed the other one. Yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this bit of tape, and we'll join the two together. Yeah. And as long as that one goes past the back window, from there, needs to be at least to there. Yes. So we do it to about there, give yourself a little more. Okay. Better to be generous. Okay. We might have enough room to just sort of like... better do this on the pontoon. I think we're going to have to do it on the pontoon. Right, think you, right. you hop off, I'll pass it over. Okay, mm -hmm. and we'll do the other one at the same time. Yeah, but let's do one at a time, yeah? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Rain freeze! Right, well, that's the bubble wrap on. It's a bit of an odd mix. It's probably the neatest we've ever put it on. It's probably the least satisfactory we've ever had because we don't have the right cord to hold it down so we're just using a bit of string at the minute um, tomorrow when i have the time i'll go up to bows and bobs and i'll buy some paracord or some light nylon cord and we'll use that it'll be much more robust and it'll last the winter much better than string but string's what we have for now what we've done is we have tied the bottom of it down to the ropes and lines things like the jenny car sheets and the uh, stuff like that the deck hardware and you can see that we put reinforcing tabs on there, which are really just <laughs> reinforcing tabs. Otherwise known as a bit of gaffer tape with a hole in it. But um, it should work and it'll hold it down. At the end of the day, if a storm rips it or blows it around, we'll just stick it back together with more gaffer tape. It's only there to keep the condensation off the inside of the windows. That's its only job. And as long as it does that, I don't much care what it looks like. The midnight raider has been caught. Not really. I'm putting coffee away. I hardly think uh, putting coffee away. You mean you're not the midnight raider? No, um, I'm the uh, restocker of coffee. That's okay then. A highly uh, important task, as you know. Well, I'm glad that job's done because it's getting dark. And the problem with cameras like this is they tend to overdo the exposure to brighten it up. So what I've done is I've made the exposure on the screen down to the point where it looks just like we see it outside. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. I thought it was about a quarter to six. <laughs> anyway, this is four o'clock in the afternoon and um, yeah, it just feels like winter's coming, isn't it? Definitely. <laughs>